Good morning and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. I wish that every member of my congregation had one of our hymnals at home, and I wish they used it for a lot of things beyond singing. Our hymnal is a very rich resource that can help our faith in many ways, and especially as a devotional resource. In our hymnal, you can find prayers, psalms, the scripture readings for the next Sunday, a daily lectionary listing scripture passages you can read each day, Luther's small catechism, the biblical foundations for the worship service, plus the opportunity to re read and reflect on the profound poetry of the, all the hymns. It has much to offer and ought to be used instead of sitting on a shelf or tucked away in a piano bench. Near the beginning of the hymnal, you have the calendar, which first lists the festivals and commemorations we observe and the people we honor for their lives of faith. That's another great resource that can impel us to learn about the lives of these folks and let them inspire our lives of faith. Following that, you have the scriptures for each Sunday and the prayers of the day, and following that is a section called Additional Prayers. These are prayers designed to help in a variety of life situations and when there is something you need to pray for and don't have the words. Our hymnal can often provide the words. And sometimes you might find that there are things prayed about that you never thought about praying for as well. So why am I telling you all this? Well, at the very end of all those prayers, they have some well-known prayers by significant people of faith. And that's what we're going to look at this week. Some prayers by some well-known prayers. Our first one is from Augustine of Hippo. St. Augustine is considered by many to be the preeminent father of Western Christianity. He was born in 354 to a mother who was a devout Christian and a father who was a pagan. Although not a Christian in his early life, he eventually converted and became a powerful voice for faith, eventually becoming a bishop and writing three very influential books, The City of God, Confessions, and On Christian Doctrine. He wrote much about grace and salvation, and Martin Luther was an avid proponent of Augustine's views. The prayer that is attributed to Augustine of Hippo is powerful and moving. O oh, loving God, to turn away from you is to fail. Let me read that again because I just read it incorrectly. O oh, loving God, to turn away from you is to fall. To turn toward you is to rise, and to stand before you is to abide forever. Grant us, dear God, in all our duties your help, in all our uncertainties your guidance, in all our dangers your protection, and in all our sorrows your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. What a beautiful first sentence. To turn away from you is to fall. To turn toward you is to rise. And to stand before you is to abide forever. In this prayer, Augustine begins by recounting what God does for us. How God is our source of strength and life. The fountain of light and love. And it all culminates in dwelling with God in peace and joy forever. And then Augustine turns to what we need. We need God's help in all we do. Amid the uncertainties of life, we need God's Spirit to guide us. We need God's protection. And then in a remarkable honesty about life, Augustine prays that in our sorrows, we would know God's surpassing peace. This prayer is, all at the same time, simple, direct, honest, plaintive, meek, profound, and powerful. O oh, loving God, to turn away from you is to fall, 
To turn toward you is to rise, and to stand before you is to abide forever. Grant us, dear God, in all our duties your help, in all our uncertainties your guidance, in all our dangers your protection, and in all our sorrows your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. May this be our prayer. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.